Okay. Um, okay, can I start? Yeah, I think we should just start first because how soon is not here. Okay, uh, teacher Jopis is going to teach a few of the practices today, yeah? So, uh, we'll just, yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, hi everyone, I'm teacher Jopis. Uh, I've joined some of the previous um, uh, Zoom sessions, if you all know this, but uh, yeah, today I'll just be helping uh, teacher so just uh, do some of the editing practice. So continuing from where it was left off last week. Um, yeah, and if you didn't join last week's lesson, check out the Google Classroom recording. And then if you have any more questions, you can ask teacher Lisa. But uh, we stopped at um, eight, question eight. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Okay, so the sentence will start from whereas, whereas in democratic societies where people are enfranchised, enfranchised, they willingly give up some of their freedom to the authority in return for security that the state provides and the law that protects them from danger. Legislations are passed. Okay, can anyone um, identify any mistake here? No? Turn on your camera. Thank you. Okay, yes. Question eight, anybody? Yeah. Anyone can identify? Okay, Shao Shao Xuan, Xuan. Am I saying that right? Am I Sean, Sean. That one is Sean. Oh, Sean. Okay, <laughs> Sean. Sean is nodding, uh, is shaking his head. So anyone, uh, Kai Sin and Tian, what, what are your opinions? Uh, are there any mistakes in this sentence? You can give a thumbs up if you think no. You can give a thumbs down if you, you think that there's a mistake. Everybody know what legislation is. Uh. So smart. Uh. <laughs> yeah, do, what, what do, you, do you guys know what legislations mean? Okay, no. Okay, can we all like do a quick Google search find look at what legislations mean? And then, and then someone can can tell me, can just uh, voice up and tell or me. Anyone want to guess what legislation is? Laws? Yes, very good. Correct. Legislation is law. It's just another word for law. So in line eight, got any mistake? No. No mistake. Law to laws? Law to laws? Uh, let's see. And the law that protects them from danger. Now, there's only like one law that technically pro uh, protects us from danger. It's all categorized under one, um, uh, how to say, like one column. Uh. So that law is just one singular thing. You don't have to put with S. Oh, how soon is here? Oh, okay. Okay, let's add him. Yeah, so that's why it should still be law. law. Yeah. Anyone else have any more guesses? Uh, or if you think the sentence is correct, can you give a thumbs up? Correct, correct. Yay. Correct. Okay. But I think do you have any more? Do you have any? Do you identify any more mistakes, or do you do you think that it's correct? Okay. Oh. Great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's correct. This this um. This sentence is correct. Hmm. Okay, so we continue on to question nine. Legislations are passed and debauchery is frowned upon, frowned on, for example, because our collective wisdom knows what our best interest is. Okay, anyone know what debauchery means? How soon, by the way, uh, teacher Jovis is teaching some of the, uh, the editing practices today, yeah? Just in case you don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yes, and debauchery. Anybody, you know, I'm pretty sure none of y'all know what this means, right? And if you did your homework, you should have Googled what this is. I've always told you guys, you need to go and figure out those words you don't understand. It is that this how way, right? Is it how way? How sin? How sin? How sin? How sin? Are you able to own your camera or no? No, I think he said his camera is broken or something. Okay. So we just leave it at that. Okay. Anybody Google debauchery already not? 
so slow. Someone can just unmute and, uh, and let me know what debauchery or whatever your understanding of debauchery is. Fast, fast. You guys Google very fast one, right? How come, how come so slow? Well, nobody knows how to explain because it's a very weird explanation that you that Google provides. <laughs> yes? <laughs> okay, very simple. Debauchery in this case. Of Sorry? Like alcohol, alcohol, being a alcoholic or like addicted to drugs or sex. Yeah, so it's basically just an excessive indulgent, uh, indulgence in these kinds of things. Uh. So another way to explain in this case in law terms is called corruption. Anybody, everybody know what corruption is or not very familiar with what corruption is? Just to explain, like corruption, you know, is in law, like all the politics, if uh, those politicians, right, or those government, um, what I call it, government people, like if let's say they do certain things, that um uh, that is bad, <laughs> you know, that is called corruption. Uh. Like if they take money from bad people, for example, to protect the bad people, that is corruption already. So debauchery in this case is referring to corruption because it's referring to the law thing. Legislation here is law, ma, right? So that's why referring to the corruption in that's taking place in law. Hold on, uh. sorry, having some technical difficulties, you can continue. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so Law, uh, that's why that, that uh, debauchery here just means corruption. And you guys understand what corruption is already? Yeah? Can just annotate somewhere there. Lah. Okay. So, in that line, let's see. Legislation yes. and debauchery is frowned on, for example, because our collective wisdom, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Who can tell me the answer for this one? Yeah, we'll be able to see this. Mm, okay, yeah, we have it back. Okay, so yes. Yeah. Okay. Anyone knows the answer for number nine? Or can guess? Let's see this. I'll give you guys a hint. It's a phrasal verb. Never do homework, is it? Huh? Why nobody <laughs> give me the answer? Anyone at all? Any kinds of anything you can identify at all? Phrasal verb, guys. Phrasal verb. What what you remember, teacher Lisa, teach you about what phrasal verbs are about? Do you identify any phrasal verb? Like, can I annotate on this thing? Uh, are you able to? No, I think on your side you have to. Oh wait, wait, hold on. Um, uh, uh, who can share? Let's see if this works. Oh, don't need to share. I just need to annotate the, the annotation. Enable participant annotation, that one. Mm. Guys, phrasal verb. Where is my phrasal verb? Frowned on. Frowned okay. on. Yes, correct. Who said that? Kaisin, is it? Frowned on is your phrasal verb, correct. So what is the mistake here? Is it the verb or the preposition? Hello? Hello? Preposition. Preposition, correct. What do we change it to? Upon. Very good. Frowned upon, correct. We will say frowned upon. Phrasal verb always must remember these two always together. Frowned upon. So please annotate your PV for phrasal verb over there. Then let's go to number 10. 
Number 10, so because our collective wisdom knows what our best interest is, it is only by sacrificing our claims to personal freedom that we discover the best way to achieve it. Okay, guesses. Like, who has, who has any guesses? By the way, collective wisdom, does anybody know what it means? Anyone want to guess what collective wisdom means? It sounds very alien, right? Nobody want to guess? Right off the bat, collective means what? Like a whole group. Wisdom? Anybody know what's wisdom? Knowledge. Like how smart something. Like how information that you know even. Yeah, knowledge, information. So collective wisdom, when we say because our collective wisdom means that everybody have this same knowledge about certain things, which is our best interest. We all know what uh, what we want that is that will benefit us the most. What that is our best interest. That's referring to how it um what benefits us. Best interest referring to how how it benefits us. So the collective wisdom, our collective wisdom means that everyone knows um how to best benefit ourselves. That's what that line is trying to say. And then when it says it is only by sacrificing our claims to personal freedom that we discover the best way to achieve it, it's saying that when we sacrifice, um, in a way, our personal freedom, sometimes we can figure out how to achieve um, something that benefits us. So, line 10. There shouldn't be any mistake, right? Because from question one to seven, all got mistakes already, right? Right, guys? Then why y'all never say anything? Very funny, huh? <laughs> y'all just sitting down there like, oh, they're just saying no mistake, lah, yo. <laughs> but okay. But we don't care whether got no mistake or mistake, whatever. Anybody feels like, hey, this question, I think feel like a mistake, but I don't know whether it's wrong or not. Anyone? Like feels like, hey, this one not mistake me. No ah. How say nothing also? No. No response me no ah. Okay law Eddie and then for this one any questions? No no okay then we can go to next one test six. Right. Okay test six. <clears throat> okay, so be it in schools, at the workplace, or in public, there are rules to govern our code of conduct. Rules and conformity are what most people live with. All right. I'll read the whole thing first. Read the whole thing first. Oh, read the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> While obedience is good to a certain extent, <clears throat> complete obsequious. Obsequious. Oh, this book, guys, I'm pretty sure y'all don't know this word, so right? Don't worry, teacher Lisa also had no idea what this means. Yeah, so it's obsequious. Ob obsequious. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. It's a very weird word. Okay, I'm going to explain to you what this word means before we carry on. It's just so, you know, we're already here. Okay, obsequious uh, means... Uh, very obedient. Like, to the, to the extent that it becomes that this person or this thing becomes a servant. Okay? It's not talking about your obedient to like your parents, for example. In that case, you cannot use obesicrius because that is too far already. That is extremely obedient, that kind. To, to the extent where it's like almost to a slave, to a servant. I think slave would be better meaning. You know what? Teacher Jovis, can we bracket and put that slave like? Slave, <laughs> like, yeah. Slave. I think you guys can annotate that way, that way as, well, as well. Slave like. So you all re can remember. This one not saying that, oh, I'm very obedient to my parents so I can use this word, right? No, cannot. Lah. It's like slave like that kind. Okay? 
So with that, we'll just continue reading the next one. Obsequious is not something to be encouraged. Under what circumstances are obedience necessary then? Obedience in the law is paramount as the law is disinterested and ensures that everyone receive equal protection from harm, without which there is bedlam. Follow the rules in an organization is essential as the code of conduct ensures good work ethics and fair. This in turn creates a positive environment that brings productivity and efficiency for the organization. However, much as obedience is necessary, rules must evolve and not be monolithic. Obedience to everything encumbers creativity and growth. Okay, so okay, first. there are some words over here that y'all don't know, right? First one will be your after after the obsequious. Um where is that one? Bedlam, line six, without which there is bedlam. Bedlam, bedlam, bedlam. Yeah, it's bedlam, sorry. Bedlam. Bedlam here means confusion. Like, um, you know how in court, in the courtroom, uh, let's say the judge sentenced somebody to who is actually innocent to like, oh, a lifetime in jail, then everybody, whoa no, 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 this is wrong, this is wrong. Then after the, the, the judge will slam the hammer and say, order in the court, right? <laughs> then that is Bedlam right there. That's a lot of confusion, a lot of uproar, a lot of um, like very chaotic scenario that's happening. Understand? I think you all can picture, visualize the image in your head, right? With the judge like banging the gavel, which is the hammer thing, like order in the court. <laughs> Yeah, so the whole scenario is very like chaotic. There's a lot of confusion, uproar. That is Bedlam. Okay, okay. Yes. If yes, Tian Tou or something, okay, <laughs> can. <laughs> okay, then we got monolithic. What on earth is monolithic, right? Very simple, monolithic. Okay, there's two different meanings over here. The first meaning, which is uh, not the meaning that we need in this sentence, is just referring to uh, something that's being formed uh, using a large block of stone. If you can think back to like Greek mythology kind of situation, you know that they have the columns, like macam pillar like that of the, 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 okay, just imagine pillar. Then you know, like, the kind of Greek, um, what is that called? Architecture, right? They have the long, long column that is supporting, like, the roof thing. That is made, it is called monolithic because it's made out of one single stone. Large, big slab of stone. Okay? So that's obviously not the meaning that we want over here, right? So the other meaning, which is the meaning that we need to use for here, is, um, you know, you can say that it's, it's to describe an organization or to describe something that is uh, not flexible. When I mean not flexible, I mean not talking about it, not being able to bend. Let's say for an organization, if we're saying that this organization is not, this is monolithic, means that very uh, by the books, it's, it's very, um, how to say, uh, strict. Um, Sorry? Rule abiding? Yeah, rule abiding. Uh, only following a certain set of uh, rules, certain set of instructions cannot uh, venture away from it. So in a way, it's also rigid. Another way to say it's very rigid. Um, very slow to change. Or maybe you can say opposed to change as well. Opposed means not they don't want to change. Okay, so that's the meaning of monolithic here. So the first meaning is referring to something that's made up from a singular slab of uh, stone, a very large slab of stone, but that's not the meaning that we want here. So the next meaning, which will be slow to change, very rigid, maybe opposing to change as well. Teacher Jovis maybe write opposing to change as well. Uh, slow, slow or opposing, yeah, to change. Is everyone clear with this explanation or? Yeah. All clear? All clear. I think all clear, huh? Okay, then I realized there's another word on top for line four. Um, paramount. Obedience in the law is paramount as the law is disinterested, blah, 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 blah. Okay, paramount just means that it is, there is more 
uh, obedience is more important than everything else. Yeah, so paramount just means something that is more important than others. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, or you can say that have a lot of, uh, what's that called? Have a lot of, uh, okay, we will just say have a lot of power. Um, yeah, the best word is power. I can't think of another word. Have a lot of power also. So teacher Jovis can put a slash then right there, having um, a holding, wow. holding a lot of power, holding a lot of power. Yeah. Okay, any other words here that you guys need me to explain or not before we move on? Oh, encumbers, right. Okay, encumbers. Uh, let me see. And obedience to everything encumbers crave. Uh, okay, this one, anybody want to guess? This should be something that's easy to guess. Curb? Uh, curb, yeah, yeah, can. Curb, restrict also can. Hinder. Yeah also can yeah so it's not saying that it stops creativity but it's an obstacle okay which is true right if you're obedient you know uh it's very hard for a person to 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 show creativity if you think about it like uh in an in an office uh if let's say the this boss say oh you can only do this 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 will this worker be able to think out of the box think of like different ways to to handle situations obviously not it's going to be very difficult because this person will be you know oh i have to do this 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 way i cannot i cannot do another way i cannot uh you know uh do it in uh in in plan b i have to do it only in plan a so it will encumber the creativity. It will encumber development. Growth here is referring to development. Now. So it will restrict. It will, it's an obstacle to it. Okay, dokes. Yes? Okay, any more words that you all don't understand from this passage? Line one, conformity. Anybody? Anybody who understands conformity can please explain it. <laughs> I want to guess Tin Yen. I think you should know what conformity is, right? Tin Yen. Camera. Lee. Okay, maybe she went to toilet or something. Okay, conformity here. Uh, if I think you're also not sure, right? Do you all know or don't know? Because it conformity... doesn't mean like all being the same. All being the same, uh, not exactly, no. No, not exactly. But similar attributes. Similar attributes. Uh. Okay, it's, it's more of a verb which shows that you follow certain things. So, uh, you comply with certain things. You're following like the rules, for example. Do you understand? When we say that we conform to, ah, okay, we always hear this sentence, um, conform to society's uh, views. This shows that we, we follow or we are molded by society's views on certain things. For example, in Singapore, uh, we, are, we have to study very hard. That's like, and, and, uh, that's like the, the main thing. Then everybody have tuition. Right, so that conforms our Singaporean education. It molds it, and then everyone, all our parents and stuff, they all conform to that, um, that that rule, that unofficial rule that everyone or that oh, when you have children, your children must have tuition. Your children must uh must must score very well, must get into a very good school. That's conforming to a certain thing, certain idea, certain practice, certain rules, certain obligations even. Okay? It's a bit very chim here, la, a bit difficult to understand, but hopefully uh, you guys can, can understand now. Yeah? Can? Can, ah? Uh? How soon are you okay, no, uh? You haven't said a thing, eh? 
house and you're muted by the way. So yeah. uh, okay. Okay, uh, okay, can because you're so quiet over there. I, I scared you 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 lost. Okay, any other words here? Let me see. Uh how about line five? Line five. Uh which word? The first one. Disinterested. Disinterested yes. means not interested. Literally means not interested. Yes, anything else? Uh, work ethics. Anybody need me to explain what work ethics is? Number seven, line seven, the all the way at the back. Work ethics, good work ethics. I think you all know what it means, right? But I don't know how to explain, right? Yes? Yeah, okay. So ethics okay whatever it is work ethics or whatever ethics okay ethics is just um moral principles a set of uh things that you follow in whatever scenario so in this case will be in a work scenario so good work ethics would be like being reliable being responsible um having leadership that's good work ethics studying study ethics would be you know to pay attention to take down notes, to ask questions. So those are your ethics. Hopefully you guys can get the hint to ask questions. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's just your moral principles that you follow by. Things that you just follow la, in life. Anything else? I think nothing else, right? No one say anything, so nothing. Huh? In that case, we look at number one now. Okay, our code of conduct, rules and conformity are what most people live with. Anyone can guess. Anyone? Need a hint? The hint, okay. <laughs> Phrasal verb. Remember, we just talked about it just in the previous test. Phrasal verb. Uh, can anyone identify the phrasal verb? That we live with. Yes. yes. Exactly. Change right. what? In? Live in? No. Think about it this way. Do we say we live in rules? Or leave what rules? By? Yes, correct. Leave by rules. Very good. So that is your phrase of book. Anybody think there is another answer for number one? Or feel like, hey, this one not wrong, meh? No one? Okay, then I want to ask. Conformity is what rule? This is easy, yeah. Conformity is what rule? What grammar rule? Noun. Yes, correct, noun. So rules also noun, nah. just annotate there, just a bracket N. Rules and then your conformity, bracket N, yeah, your noun. Okay, number two. Okay, while obedience is good to a certain extent, Complete obsequious is not something to be encouraged. Okay, guesses, please. <laughs> okay, this one difficult, but can try. Think about grammar rules. So long as you think about your grammar rules, you should know what's the answer already. Anyone? Throw guesses at us. Complete. Complete. Uh, complete is what grammar rule? You're very close though. Complete is not 
the, the, the one that's wrong, but you're very close. Complete is what grammar rule first. Ah, uh, nope. Adjective. Complete is under adjective. So, um, is it? Uh-huh. Tinian, yes. You, you you are muted now. Okay, you get it. <laughs> obsequious. Yeah, it's the obsequious, correct. What grammar rule is that? Noun. Obse obsequious is noun. So adjective describing noun is correct. What? So is that noun? Is obsequious but tries to change it to a noun. All right, change yeah. to a noun. But okay, so but I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I know. So before we change it to a noun, what is this grammar rule? Obsequious is what grammar rule? Um, adjective? Yes. Yeah, correct. It's adjective. Very good. Okay, so... Let's, wait, let's get teacher Jovis to share with us what's the answer. Okay, so we cannot use an adjective to describe another adjective, right? So it has to change to a noun, which in this case would be obsequiousness. Obsequiousness. Remember, always your noun, right? One good rule of thumb, if you don't know how to make it into a noun, just put a nurse behind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a very good rule of thumb because some words... Uh, such as this. Uh, honestly speaking, I've never seen this word before as well. So we're learning something new today. So yes, we add an N-E-S-S. If you really die, die, cannot think of what is the noun, right? Good rule of thumb, just throw in a nurse. Okay, is that a nurse or a shun? Uh, S-I-O-N or T-I-O-N. So you just see which one and you just try your luck. Law. So in exam, same thing. If you see, come across this kind of weird, weird word, right? Then you're like, die, I know confirm need to change to noun. But what is the, the noun word? Just try your luck. Just put a nurse, uh, which is majority of all the, the weird words usually is a nurse one. Uh. If that does not sound right, then you either put a shun, the S-I-O-N or the T-I-O-N. Uh. Okay, now, everybody like so blur. Okay, can I? Uh? Next question three. So complete obsequiousness is not something to be encouraged. Under what circumstances are obedience necessary then? Okay, number three. This is a bit tricky, but if you read it carefully, you should be able to identify the answer. If you look at the second half of the line, that's where your, the error is. There is an error, and it's in the second half of the line from your under all the way. Uh, what? Um, okay, if we say that that's the mistake, what do we change it to? Which? Uh, okay, so actually what is fine, we don't have to change it to which. It would sound correct as well. And technically, under which circumstances is correct. Um, but in this case, both what and which is acceptable. So since both of them are, you know, still correct, we don't have to change. It's, there's no need for, for a change. It's the, it's the same thing as your which versus that. Sometimes, uh, okay, we understand that after that, is an, uh, it's not an extra clause or right? it's something that's very important, right? But in certain scenarios, um, the clause after your which or that, it can, you can use it, you can use both which or that because it doesn't matter whether it's an additional thing or not because they, maybe they didn't give enough context to suggest that it's extra information or whether it's an important information. So in that case, the which or that thing also acceptable, whichever they use is also okay. Same for this one, what, which, interchangeable, both also okay. So that's why we don't have to change it. Okay, anybody else? I'll give you guys a hint. It's about singular and plural thing. It's 
one of your tenses. R. Correct. Yes. R is your tense. What do we do there? Is. Is. Correct. Why? First, uh, obedience is. Ten. Correct. Obedience is your subject. Very good. Yes. So, Teacher Jovis, we underline the obedience. Then we can write subject on top. Correct. So, now, why, why is circumstances not the subject here? Why do we look at obedience instead of circumstances? Any guesses? Or is it like, because I really think the obedience thing is like the keyword, ma. Is it that way? Does anybody think that way? Yeah? Yeah? Some people? Anybody? Yeah? Okay, I see Kaisin nodding head. Yeah, correct. So yeah, when we read this sentence, we're like, yeah, ma, obedience is like the keyword. Well, obviously, that's the subject already. La. Correct. So well, I'll read this sentence one more. Under what circumstances is obedience necessary then? Yes. So we're referring to obedience and we're not referring to the circumstances because the circumstances are the, the thing in question, but it's related to the obedience. That's why your obedience is the subject. Okay. Can I? Okay, then let's go to number four. Okay. Uh, is obedience necessary then? Obedience in the law is paramount as the law is disinterested. Okay. Number four. Preposition. Guys, there's only one preposition here. In. Yep. So, what should we do with the in? Think about the word obey. Go back to your root word. Obedience comes from the word obey. The, the, word, <laughs> the root word obey. So, it's not obey in, but obey Obey. Yeah, what? what do you see? Yes, correct. Obey to the law. It obey to the law. Obedience to the law. <laughs> correct. Yeah. So this is a preposition here. It's not talking about phrasal verb, but this is your preposition because obedience you can use with other uh in other scenarios and other grammar grammatical structure, we can use other prepositions. So it's not a phrasal verb. So it's just preposition error. So in this case, it would be obedience to the law, like obey to whatever thing out. Yeah. Or an alternative answer that is also correct is to towards. Mm. Okay. So for this one, right, I want to explain the difference between two and towards. You cannot use them um interchangeably all the time. Like just now how I explain your what and the which thing. Same thing for this two and towards cannot use it interchangeably all the time. There's different meaning. Okay, I've explained this to some of y'all before. Come out in like one of the editing practices. Lah. Okay, when we say towards, uh, please annotate this somewhere. Huh? Okay, when we, exp when we say towards, we are, we're referring to an exact direction. Referring to a specific direction. For example, if I say I'm heading towards you, literally that direction, that pathway is already generated, literally proceeding towards this person. Okay, same thing. I'm heading towards school, literally in the direction, moving towards the school. But if you say to, we don't, we can say, um, uh, okay, for example, I, I am going to school. This doesn't show that specific direction. It just merely says that, okay, you're going to school, but did not mention like, are you going now or not? If you say I'm going to school right now, 
Same thing, you are going to do that action, but you're not doing like physically walking or moving to that direction yet. But if you say going towards, or in this case, we'll be heading towards school, physically in the process of walking to the school. Does anyone not get it? Basically, when we say towards means you're physically doing the action of proceeding to a place, like walking, running, jogging, driving, whatever. If you say to, it could just mean that you are about to do this action, not yet doing it, doing the action. Even when you say going to school, when you say going to school, it doesn't mean that you are physically approaching to school yet, to the school yet. Just means that you're about to do this action or you're in the midst of about to do this action. That's why, you know, in Singapore, like you always hear my, your friends say, oh, I'm going to tuition now or I'm going to blah, blah, blah. So if they are saying going to, technically it means that they are not heading in that direction yet which is wrong, right? But because Singaporean, right, we always say, oh, I'm going to tuition, I'm going to do this, I'm going to the shopping mall. Yeah, so if they say that, they mean, it means that they haven't, they're not in the process of like heading towards that, the destination yet. But when we say I'm heading towards school right now, means that they're physically moving in that direction to the school. Understand? Yes? So next time you can just clarify with your friend also. Are you going to or heading towards? Helping your friends one and one one question, one editing question at a time. Yes. Understand, huh? Okay, huh? Anybody lost or not? How say you lost or not? Tin Yen, your camera turned on, so I don't know whether you're okay or not okay. Sorry, it's laggy if my camera's on. Oh, chair. Okay, then how say you? How say you okay or not? Yes. Yes, uh, okay, Ken, then we move on to number five. Lo. Okay, moving on to number five. As the law is disinterested and ensures that everyone receives equal protection from harm. I think this one is quite easy. Guys, you all can guess. Number five, then very, very easy. The answer. Just, just I think you choose one, one person. Choose one person. One person. Shao <laughs> Xuan. Okay, Sean. Sean. <laughs> oh, if not, Hao Xian can help him. Hao Xian. Let's go. Though you know what? The Hao Xian answer. I think I want Hao Xian answer because Hao Xian have an answer. Yeah, everybody already tried. Hao Xian, number five. Very, very easy. Super, super easy one. Meanwhile, you guys, the rest of you are going to figure out the answer. Uh. Don't just wait for the answer. Uh. It's super, super, super easy. How say and try? Hen rong yi de. How say it really are? Uh, me so long ah. Anybody guess the answer or not? Can raise hand. Receive. Ah yes. yes, correct. Very good. Yeah, how say and you you understand or not? Oh. No, don't understand. Yeah. Okay, everyone, we underline everyone ah. Everyone is singular, right? So let's draw arrow to the receive. Singular, remember, we always add S to the verb. Right here. Remember not? How's it? Yeah. Yeah, so always we add S, right? Singular, we add S, ma. So everyone is considered as singular. Okay, always remember uh, all of y'all. Uh, anytime you see the word every, okay, it always refers to just one thing, singular. So even though everyone like, yeah, everyone means got a lot of people. How come singular? It is still singular because it's talking about every individual person. So anytime you see the word every, every time, every day, every person, every individual, as long as you see the word every, it just means singular really. So your verb always just put S. Okay? How say understand not? Yeah. Okay. Number six. 
and says equal receives equal protection from harm, without which there is bedlam. Follow the rules in an organization is essential as a code of conduct. Okay. Number six. I will Thanks. give you guys the hint. It's the second half, the last part of the 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 yeah, correct. That side from there. The mistakes there. Following. Correct. Follow change to? Following. Yes, very good. Do you know why? To follow to be essential. Because in, in this case, when we say following the rules in an organization, this shows that uh you must continue with the, the back line. It says it's, it's essential as the code of conduct ensures blah blah blah, right? So when you do this thing, means when you say do this thing means like physic, like like um how to say at that time in that scenario, you are physically doing that action, so continuous stance is important. Understand? It's important because the, it's essential. Essential means important. So when we say following the rules, not just follow the rules. Following means to do that action. Okay, so it becomes a continuous tense. That is important. Okay, uh, then number seven. Okay, following oh, the rules. In wait, 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 stop us, huh? The there is bitlam, the bitlam or grammar rule. Anyone can tell me what's the grammar rule? Now, yes, correct. There is the thing, right? So, bitlam is the thing, right? So, it's just now, no. Okay, yes, let's continue with number seven. Following the rules in an organization is essential as the code of conduct ensures good work ethics and fair. Okay. Number seven, you, you hear teacher Jovis be already shook a problem, right? <laughs> fair to fairness. Yes, yeah. correct. It's very obvious over here. Now, I want to ask what is the change? What's the grammar rule change over here? and you want to explain? Fair is what rule? Then fairness is what rule? Or anybody want to guess? Um, fair uh. is adjective? Yes, yes, correct. And then we change to fairness, which is? Noun. Correct. Now, I'd like to ask, why should we change it to a noun? Why can't we use adjective there? Aren't we describing the code of conduct? Are we describing the code of conduct? Yes, no? Yes, no question eh. You can maybe even say a maybe. Are we describing the code of conduct? Yes, no, maybe. Even no. if you can say maybe. Oh, who say no? Me. Ah, correct. Yeah, we're not describing the code of conduct, right? Correct. So then uh why why should we use noun, not adjective? Eh? Because we are not describing anything and also something in the front is a what? It's also a noun. Ah, which one? Ethics. Correct. So ethics is noun, right? Your fair must change to fairness also. Because first thing, we're not describing anything, so it cannot be adjective. Second thing, if the front is a noun, the behind also must be noun. Ma. Okay. Okay, then we move to number eight. Okay, this in turn creates a positive environment that brings productivity and efficiency for the organization. Mm. Okay, someone tell me answer. Got mistake, no mistake. 
no mistake. Yeah, correct. No mistake. Anybody feels like, hey, this one feels like this one wrong, eh? How CN especially, yeah? How CN anything or not, ah? You must ask questions, eh? If you find like, hey, I thought this one is wrong. How CN? Yeah. Anything or not? No. Sure. Later, I give you this one to redo. Ah. <laughs> okay, never mind. We move to number nine. You all should be old enough to ask questions already. I don't want to neck neck also. Okay, number nine, yes. Okay, so brings productivity and efficiency for the organization. However, much as obedience is necessary, rules must evolve. Okay. This one is a uh, phrase of the hint is phrase of and I'll give you guys him because running out of time already. It's the first half from your efficiency, efficiency, sorry, from the efficiency to the organization. Four. Mm, correct. Change to what? Two. Very good. Efficiency to the organization. This is your PV, phrase of verb. And then uh, 10. We all know that number one to everything all are uh, wrong, right? So number 10, obviously no mistake. But in this line, number 10, anybody feels that should, uh, not sure why is this one correct? No? Wow, that must ask the question already. Okay, do you remember just now in line four with the obedience to thing? If you look at line 10, you see that obedience two is over there as well. So that is your hint. Can we box that up for the obedience two in line 10 and then we draw arrow all the way to the obedience in, which is on top? That is your hint over there. We just draw, we draw a big, big arrow all the way to the obedience in. Ah. That's your secret hint right there. Wow. Okay. Let me see what other question can I ask. Uh, much as obedience is necessary. Uh, okay, why for line 10, we use and and not but? Mama, this one cannot tell me. Uh. When do we use but? When they have opposite. Yes, not opposite, but contrast. When there's a contrast. So in this case, is this a contrast over here? Rules must involve, evolve and not be uh, rigid. Is, uh, is, are they in contrast with one another? No. No, because they write not be rigid, not be monolithic. So it's not in the contrast. Okay, then why, I know encumbers is not one of the mistakes, but why encumbers and not encumber? Everything. Correct. Okay, then why not past tense? Why not encumbered? This one is still uh, happening. Correct. But another way to also figure this out is your two. After two, the sentence cannot have your past tense already. Ah, okay. Can I? Okay, we'll move to the next one. We only have like four minutes. So, uh, teacher Jovis, you just uh, flip for me, Henry. Let me move to the next one. Move to the next one. Okay. <laughs> to the next one. I, if, then I don't need to show the screen. Hmm. <laughs> the test seven. You got test seven. Yeah. Uh, I think. Show. Yeah. And my dad, I just show my one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, share screen. Share screen. Share screen. Fast. Fast. Let's fast. Fast. Let's my this one. Okay. Test seven. Like, 
Okay, in the past, males and females had, spe bleh, had specified roles in society. He hunted and protected the family while she was responsible in cooking the meals and raised the young. Though the interdependence of the genders was salient, he was overtly the boss. The gender revolution began when new inventions made work less physically demanding. It was a game changer. Women were able to enter the workforce. This also coincided with the Industrial Revolution when machines could be operated by hand and co and sorry, and cooperative management was favored upon um upon bellicose style. Okay, that word I also don't know. Let's go and figure out later on. She and he became they, biological different but similar in other aspects. Though the gender revolution may emasculate the men in male-dominating societies, they cannot avoid the force of change. The revolution is more rapid than one can imagine. Okay, so line one, in the past, males and females had specified roles in society. He hunted and protected the family while she was responsible in cooking the meals. In, in change to... Uh. Nope, but very close. Anybody else want to guess? Four? Mm. Yes, correct. It's for responsible for something. We always say this person responsible for doing this thing. Okay. This will be is it phrasal verb? We are responsible. No, it's preposition error because we got responsible to do this thing. Yeah, so it's preposition error. Okay, number two. Cooking the meals and raise the young, though the interdependence of the genders was salient. Salient is important, by the way. And interdependence means that one person rely on the other. So male, female rely on both is important. Now. So this salient is important. But yes, number two, number two, number two. Raised to raising. Correct. Very good. Responsible for cooking. ING, right? So, whoa, ING also. Easy peasy. Understand? Then number three, though the interdependence of the genders were salient, he was overtly the boss. She, okay, was she, sorry, the gender revolution began. Mistake is in front here. Somewhere. Oh, change the word. Good, why? Interdependence is Wait. one. Very good. Why so fast now? Ah? <laughs> okay, next one. The gender revolution began when the when new inventions made work less physically demanding. Quite then, quite then. This last one, then we end. Okay, okay, okay. This one, this one, this one. This one changed to what? Why is this one wrong? Began. Why? Um, begun is the past participle form. Correct. Got has, have, had in front here or not? No, right? So guys, since got no has, have, had, cannot use participle. Have to use past tense already. Law. Understand? Why past tense? Because here is made past tense also. So this one past tense and uh, no has, have, had. You all just annotate. I got no space to annotate here. But yeah, no has, have, had, cannot use participle. Wait, very good. And then past tense because it's made past tense. Hen Hao, very good. Question 5 to 10, go and do uh, as per normal. Next week, I think is the last lesson. Let me just double check. Uh, oh, so, sorry, no. Next week still got uh, 12 and 19. December, we still got class. 26, then no lah, because uh, boxing day. So yes, go and do uh, this one. Finish it up. If you've got time to do some more, go and do some more lah, huh? Okay, guys, then with that, we'll end today's lesson. Um, yeah, see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.